Awesome. And uh, I think Dave will be right back. And uh, hopefully, hopefully nobody else was locked out. Um, um, Bev's not coming. I'm sorry. Bev, I you think know. she's away or doing okay. something else. I think. Let's see. So we have. A I don't know anything about Bev, but. Okay. Oh, she's not going to make it? Okay. 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 Then uh, welcome to everybody who's here. And I'm sure Dave's coming right back. Um, first order of business is approved uh, minutes from February 4th. So, minutes. Anybody have any, any, anybody have any challenges or any anything? Comments fine. on minutes? No. Second. Okay. Motion and second. Okay. There's no comments. Uh, vote to approve the minutes. Everybody. Uh, yeah, I motion to she yep. seconded. We're so motion I's. second. Yep. Yes, we're good. Aye. Okay. Aye. Any nays? Nope. Okay. That's done. Um, so next is Parks and Rec, Article 4. And here you go, sustainability brief about uh, more in Article 4. You, How are you? The floor is yours. You know, I'm not going to hook it up there oh, if you guys are okay with that. Do you all have the slides in front of you? Yep. Oh, does anybody need any? I know, Robin, you got some. Oh, sure. Did anybody else need the slides yep. down there? I have an extra if you need it. Okay. Just let me know. Um, so I'm Stephanie Papakoskandis. I'm the chair of the um, Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. And as we all know, there's a big project going on in town right now. Um, so what I wanted to do was just take a minute of your time, and I really appreciate you having me and getting me on the agenda, to kind of um, review some of the sustainable components that we've incorporated into the project because that was something that was in the forefront the entire time of this project. And additionally, we want to be sure that on Tuesday, if it hopefully passes, that we can come back and we can say, all right, let's work together and let's move forward and let's get this as, as tight as we can and hit every point that we need to that we can, okay? Um, so first and foremost, I'm not going to go through the entire project itself. <clears throat> I apologize. I, I have pneumonia, so if you see me reach oh, down and okay. but I am of Greg, Melissa, and myself. I am the least contagious. I'm not contagious. Um, they are right now, so that's why I drew the the <laughs> I drew the sustainability committee straw today. So I'm happy to be here. Um, but I wanted to kind of go over the goals of the project real quickly. Um, the reason why we um, have developed this project for the Article 4 Parks and Rec expansion is first and foremost to build a multi-generational community center, uh, planet playground replacement, which is essential as we all know, camper safety, rain and thunderstorms. Right now, if it rains, they stick the children in the bathrooms. And oftentimes they can stay in the bathrooms for about an hour and 45 minutes max before we make the call to bring them over to Tuck Learning Center, which is all the way across the town. So um, these kids don't have a place for shelter to go into when it's inclement weather, but also when it's 90 to 100 degrees, they still don't have weather and you know a space to go into as well. So this space will be able to house them. And additionally, it will allow us to add an additional 100 to 150 campers to our already coveted camp uh, registration, which you'll see tomorrow morning, there'll be lines starting at four in the morning for people to sign up their kids um, that haven't already had the opportunity to get in as returning campers. So um, hopefully we'll eliminate that problem by being able to expand with this building as well. And we can get all campers in with no wait lists. Um, improve and increase parking. As we know, we've got a large parking issue, which also creates a big safety issue because people, when they run out of parking, they park across the Access Sports um, parking lot, which is not um, an authorized parking lot for us, but they are kind enough to let us use it or they just turn a blind eye. Um, but we have people crossing that street all the time. It's very dangerous. Um, we have had somebody get hit before. We put up a sign in the middle hoping that that would um, make cars aware that that's a really tough intersection. And within uh, two weeks of that sign being put up, it was hit and dragged four times. So we just the were so, yeah, we were so grateful it wasn't a child that got hit and dragged. But at any point in time, it could be. And that's what we're so concerned about. We've been trying to move the parking over to the wreck. The only way to do that is with this expansion. Um, so this, um, um, plan actually adds 100 parking spaces in phase one. So that will be an additional 100 parking spaces um, compared to what's there already. And then in phase two, when it comes, there'll be an additional um, 80 to 90 parking spaces that'll be added um, as well when the soccer field is added in phase two. Um, patient safety as well. If you've ever been in that parking lot down there, you'll notice that there's really no traffic flow. People say, well, the traffic flow is this. Well, that's because there's no traffic flow down there. People just drive wherever and whenever they can. And right now, the way it's designed is you have to cross across that parking lot 
um, to get to the Parks and Rec because there's no entryway that goes around the park. Instead, it goes right through it. So kids are crossing, adults are crossing, everyone's crossing in there. Um, so this is going to avoid that issue happening as well. Um, improve accessibility for programming. Our playground um, especially is not ADA compliant um, right now to have anybody, um, child or adult, that's either on a walker or a wheelchair, they can't go on the playground with the wood chips that are there. Um, it doesn't hold up and, and it makes it very um, awkward and level surface for them to go on to. So the new program is uh, the new playground is going to be completely ADA accessible. In addition, we're actually going to have um, wheelchair swings as well. So um, you can just wheel a child right up. They don't even have to get out of the swings. You just lock them right in, and they can enjoy it as well. Um, it also makes it um, accessible for a lot of times. Unfortunately, guardianship right now is is with grandparents at times, and grandparents also bring their kids down to the park, and they can't really get on there with stable footing. Um, so it'll be accessible for all of them to move around. We we love Planet Play Playground and our kids love Planet Playground because of all the great hiding spaces that are there, but the hiding spaces also cause a concern. Um, you know, there's areas that we have to check uh, before camp for our hypodermic needles and things of that nature. You're always checking underneath to make sure it's safe in there. There are going to be exposed areas so that you're going to be able to see where safety is everywhere, uh, but more importantly, you'll be able to get through the structures and not have to go under and, and through the structures to get to other areas of the park. That area is going to be the same footprint as the current um, Planet Playground, so it's going to be equally as large. Um, a bonus that came uh, about a month or two ago was that we were able to um, walk into a 30-year lease with that property. We don't own that property. We own the Parks and Rec property, but we don't own the property that Planet Playground is oh, on. Yeah. And it was always on a five-year lease. And so we were able to actually work out finally a long-term lease with nice. the owners. And it's a 30-year lease because we desperately wanted to keep it there because that's just such an iconic area of where it should stay. Um, so they've worked with us so that we can, uh, we can keep it there. Um, the lease money actually comes from the revolving funds. That doesn't come from the tax dollars. So um, every year the revolving fund will pay that lease money and will come from the tax dollars as well. Um, Increased senior programming, and that's also part of our master plan in the town. Um, this facility is going to house a senior center. Currently, we have a senior center only in name. I don't know if you've ever been down there. If you have not been down there, and if you're watching on TV, I welcome you to come down this Saturday. We're having an open house at the Parks and Rec building, as well as the senior center, so that people can actually walk in and see what the conditions are um, when we hear people saying we don't need a parks and rec building, we don't need a senior center. I please invite you, if you share that opinion, to come down and just walk through. Um, we had someone come down on Friday who was a dead set no against the project, that within five minutes of walking in the building, she is an absolute hard yes and has been pushing for it now. Um, is, is that based on the parks and rec or the senior center? Both. She went through both buildings. She was shocked at the conditions. Neither of them are ADA compliant. There's no elevator or escalator to get upstairs. And that's where one of our, or two of our programming spaces are, of our three programming spaces. There's no bathroom upstairs. So once you do get upstairs, you have to come downstairs to a one stall bathroom that actually is supposed to be um, equipped for everybody that's in that building. Um, the conditions of the envelope of that building are so loose that Greg and Melissa need to put the heat up to about 80 to get it to about 70 degrees every day. When they walk into the building, Melissa's office is usually in the 60s, and they have to crank that heat in order to get any heat in there because the building is just so old. It was built in 1884, I believe. I could be misquoting that date, but 18, late 1800s. Um, so the insulation is not what it should be. Um, the space when you walk in for our um, senior chair exercise that we have, they're in a room that has um, the the uh, columns in the middle and it's it's just a room that has desks and tables and they have to work around it in their chairs it's not really a conducive space for um, for activities um, we unfortunately we had a girl come in um, that was on a walker and a fairly young girl around my age uh, come in on a walker on Friday when the woman was taking a tour mm -hmm. and um, she had to go upstairs for programming and uh, we were able to help her go upstairs for programming, but my thought process was, my gosh, I hope she doesn't have to go to the bathroom when she's up there. Yeah. And we should never have that happen for anybody coming in for programming, and that's how the building is designed. It's just been there 
forever. Yeah. The senior center is also Meals on Wheels, and Meals on Wheels operates until 2.30 in the afternoon. So in order for the seniors to have any programming, their programming can't start until 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, I have a lot of seniors in my family, and by 2.30 in the afternoon, they're ready for dinner. So <laughs> we're ready to just settle down, but they're definitely not ready to start up an activity or their programming. So this space um, at the rec center is going to give them the ability to come in when the building opens if they want. They can come on in. They can relax. They can socialize. Meals on Wheels is coming with us as well. So there will be a kitchen that will also be included in this uh, building down there, which will work in a number of different ways. The kitchen that's there will allow us to be able to have functions if we want to and be able to use the kitchen and serve into the multi-purpose space, which is also utilized as a gym. Also, the Meals on Wheels folks, when they're there, they actually feed about 20, 15 to 20 people for lunch during the day. That's where a lot of our seniors rely on their dietary intake. So when the seniors come down to actually socialize, they can actually come down, socialize, have their lunch there, and then go back to where they're going rather than going to um, you know, a place to socialize that's not being held up till 2.30, then going to Meals on Wheels to have lunch, okay. and then potentially coming down to, like, we have, a, we have a track that's going to be around there. They can do a little bit of exercising while they're there socializing as well. So it's one-stop shopping for our seniors to be able to go down and have a full day and really, really live and thrive with their, with their friends and um, also get to see children being active. A um, number of studies that show that longevity of life and seniors comes with um, being around children. And that energy kind of almost comes off the children onto them and they just love seeing it. A lot of them don't have grandchildren around or don't have young children around. So for them to see that, um, it's why we go to the senior homes to go trick or treating. That's why the rec does a program like that. It's because you just see them light up and that's what our hope is to give them quality of life and wellness um, that they deserve. They've built this town up and they deserve this back. So that's what we're hoping to give to them. Um, increased recreational programming for all ages as well. This building um, is designed to accommodate what we have in the rec department right now and then some because we have a growing community going on right now. The current spaces that we have do not accommodate the amount of, of activities and the amount of programming that we have. A perfect example is our basketball leagues that just finished up right now. We have so many basketball leagues, all ages, and it's fantastic, but we're on top of each other. And we've got one game going on, we've got another team warming up, another team ready to come on the court, times are running over. Now our third and fourth graders are playing full court where they used to play half court, so now we've lost a half court, so we have to accommodate times for those people. So we've got Main Street School, we've got Lincoln Street School, and we're incredibly grateful for their use, um, letting us use their, field, their courts. And we're going to continue to use them. However, this rec space is going to give us a full-size basketball court that we'll be able to utilize for either a full-size game or we'll be able to split it down the middle and have two half-court games going on at the same time, which will really help us to utilize the space and not have our games going all day long because what happens there is people lose the ability to spend time with their families afterwards when you've got games scheduled at four in the afternoon because that's the only time you can do it. People lose the ability to go skiing with their families or go out and, and spend time with their families. And we really want to make sure that this is community-based and family-based and we can bring everybody together. Um, additionally, um, the senior space, we need that down there. Uh, but we need the camp space as well to be able to get the kids into inc from inclement weather. Um, any questions so far? I know I'm, I'm kind of running through to... I had one question. Sure. Uh, 100 plus uh, parking spots in the first mm -hmm. draft. Uh, parking service, permeable, not permeable? I'm worried about if you add 100 parking spaces, mm -hmm. that's a lot of runoff. Yes, actually, it's a good question that we have. It's, it's, it's designed in the space, and I'll actually show you how it's designed in there as well. Um, <clears throat> we actually have, um, and it's going to be an increased drainage system in here that I'm going to get to. Um, so we'll get right to that as awesome. well. Great. Okay. Is, is so, the senior center the building that had caught fire, and so the first story, yes. the second story is gone because of yes. the fire? Yes. Okay. That is the senior center. Yep. It used to be the old fire station. Okay. Yeah. Um, I ironically, yeah. Yes, uh, ironically, right? <laughs> Isn't that ironic? The other question I had, sure. uh, and, and it's... It, it's a little bit off topic, That's but I, I was curious because I don't remember reading anywhere if there's any, um, you know, if this gets approved and it, and it goes forward, mm -hmm. uh, is there any utility of the old rec building that helps with an offset financially of the new rec building? Yeah, and it's a great question, actually. If this gets approved and the building gets built down at the rec center where it is, it actually frees up the entire property of 32 Court Street. 
32 Court Street is actually zoned for um, residential or commercial. So the town um, selectmen can decide what, or select board can decide what they'd like to do with that. They can either decide maybe to, you know, expand, I know the fire department wants to be expanded or the needs to be expanded and police and things of that nature, or it can be turned into condos, at which point the town benefits from the tax benefit from it. So there are a lot of different options, but it will free up that land. Um, and it's up to the, the select board to decide what they think that it would be best used for. So that's a great question. Any other questions before we move on? All right, great. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into the project itself. I will give you the website to check out. It's got everything available on it, and I think that most people have been kind of following a little bit about what's going on. But as we go, any questions you have, please jump out and, and ask me. But I really wanted to talk more about the sustainability components that we put into the project um, so that you can know that that's been right in the front of our minds when it comes to uh, building this project. Um, and I think that we put that piece right in your hands. So first and foremost, I'm kind of sad that we put it first because it's really kind of my drum roll piece. I'm really excited about well, it. You can skip bump it. it down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Right. All right, so let's all right, let's go with toilets because toilets aren't exciting really. Okay. Um, so we do have low flow toilets that are going to be put into the building. Um, and um, if you've seen the design, I'm actually going to um, I can hand out a little design. You'll see exactly where the toilets are in the facility. Actually, it didn't want to do any print offs so this one, but it wasn't coming up. Take a look and see. Great. Um, actually, no, it's not in this one. Nope, well, it's not in this one. It's not going to help. I'll tell you what's in there. I'll email this to you. make sure you have all of the um, the specs on it. Um, there are um, a large number of toilets that are down in the back uh, corner of the um, facility. They're placed where they are because we've designed the building so that we can actually close off the building on weekends or on off hours. And you can just shut down all the power in the building except for that area. And you can have it available for people that are there for soccer games or events down there that can actually have bathrooms instead of porta potties to be able to use. Um, and they are all low flow toilets in there. There's also two uh, family restrooms that are going to be in this facility as well. Um, all complete with changing tables. One of them will actually have an adult changing table um, because we want to encourage access for any all abilities and ages. Um, and additionally, the bathroom with the adult changing table will also have a stand-up shower in case somebody unfortunately does have an accident. We want them to be able to clean up with dignity. Um, so we made sure that we had one area that was available for that, especially where we're housing a senior center and we are opening ourselves up for all ages and all, dis all um, abilities to come in and use the facility as well. Um, LED lights as well will be um, incorporated into the entire project. We are in discussions with Unitil on this already. Um, and um, they will all be LED lights no matter what we put in down there. As far as the boilers, the high efficiency boilers are actually for the large spaces in the facility. So the large gym area, the hallways will be using high efficiency boilers. In the small spaces, the multi-purpose rooms, the offices, the kitchen down there will actually be using heat pumps so that we're able to turn off the heat in the rooms that we're not using so that we're not being wasteful. Um, so we can, um, each office is going to be separate, each room is going to be separate um, from the others and the high, efic high efficiency boilers, as I said, will be used in the big spaces. So the gym areas, the hallways, um, the bigger areas to, um, to heat as well. Um, tight building envelope. Um, right now, as we talked about, the, the envelope down at the current facility is the walls are incredibly thin. They're not efficient. Um, the windows aren't efficient. They're very drafty. Um, so this building has been designed with very thick walls, energy efficient, um, draft proof windows are going to be going in there as well. Um, and this is also, we're in discussions with uh, Unitil on, on keeping everything tight as well. Um, what's interesting is that we, um, we had the opportunity to visit uh, the Concord facility, which is a beautiful facility. It's a gorgeous, large facility. Um, what we found was they actually didn't use air conditioner in their facility. They used a dehumidification process. And um, what it did was it kept the facility at a steady 70 degrees um, year round. That's great. And um, that's the process we're going to incorporate into this as well. Uh, they said it works wonderfully, um, doesn't cause any condensation, it dehumidifies the space, doesn't make it extra dry, but it keeps it at 70 degrees um, year round and we don't have to worry about the air conditioner uh, pumping out um, any carcinogens or any issues there as well. Questions so far? A couple. Yes. Um, it sounds great. It sounds like a lot of, a lot of work's gone into planning for a super efficient uh, building. 
Yeah, a couple couple questions. Sure. You know, anytime I think there's you know a new public structure going into town, it's a, it's a massive opportunity to showcase uh, and teach uh, the citizenry of what what's possible, mm -hmm. what, the, what what else we can do, uh, you know, and lead by example. For sure. Um, some things I, 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 one word that I, you put in here that w worried me a little bit is, is the roof could accept solar panels. Well, I will, I'll explain okay. that actually. This was printed, pri yeah, okay. this was printed prior to it will be accepting, and I'll tell you how many and what it's um, ready to power. Okay. As well. So that was one, just that one word worried me. I'm glad there's an answer. No, that's a will. Um, <laughs> low flow toilets. Have we looked at things like a, like a cistern for, for runoff? You know, it, you know, re reclaiming water for flushing is a, is a really great way to keep, We've especially. We've talked about that, yeah. yeah. We've talked about that for sure. Um, has not been put into place, but it's something that we definitely can still talk about too because it's something that can be put into on top of it. It's a wonderful um, thing that we have discussed as well. So that, that would be interesting to take a look at. You know, and then uh, you answered the question on the boilers because uh, you, you jumped to that right away. I'm like, or the question is like, why are we using boilers? So yeah. there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my two my two primary things is, okay. you know, to look into a cistern. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of work out there on... Yeah. Uh, Public, public facility cisterns yep. that take advantage of rainwater runoff and and, and, and it would mitigate your, your runoff problem as well and mm -hmm. cut your water bill down and things like that. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, I so. love that. And that's one of the things we've been discussing this whole time as we look at our surrounding communities. We look at what they're doing or not doing and we really want to step up and be an example because Exeter is a great town for that. We're very conscious about what we do. We try to be conscious of what we do and it's great to be an example as any town, yep. but I think this is as good of a town as any to do to sure. be an example. We, we really walk the walk and, and we need to do it in this sense as well. Um, so what we'll go back to, so change that to roof will accept solar panels. We have already discussed with Revision Energy. And if you turn to um, or go to the next page and take a look, this actually looks at what the um, layout will be. Um, 656 solar panels will be added to the top of the community center. That puts out 250,000 kilowatts per hour. So what that breaks down to is that will not only be able to power the entire uh, rec facility, the new rec facility, and the pool area, but it also has enough kilowatts per hour to also power the town office, town hall, and currently, if you look at the um, kilowatts per hour at the 30 and 32 Court Street properties, which would become available. Um, so it's not only helping us down there, but it's helping us as a town as well to bring us something that we've needed for quite some time in town. Um, the, um, the way it works is that we uh, work with, um, with um, <clears throat> Revision Energy, and Revision Energy would act as a third party that puts up the capital. They put the, the panels on for free, so we wouldn't pay for those up front, and then they would act as our supplier, um, and we would use them as a third, third party and they would lock us in at a specific rate. And then the town would benefit immediately from it, and the rate would be lower than what the utility rates currently are. Um, the power purchase agreement um, is something that um, exists because there's a tax advantage um, on solar projects from which the town, um, as a tax-exempt entity, cannot benefit directly from. The way that this power purchase agreement works, though, is that um, in a five-year period, um, after the solar arrays have uh, proven their yield and financial value and electricity supply, the town may, but it's not obligated, to purchase the array from the investor at a steep discount um, from the original cost. So what the town can do is over those five years take a look and see what their, what their gain has been from having these solar panels. And if they don't feel that it was financially beneficial to the town or made sense to do, they can decide not to opt into this or to buy this. If they do decide to buy it, they get it at a steep discount, um, and there'll be continued savings through the lifetime. And the lifetime of these panels, they typically say, are about 40 years for the ribbon, uh, other vision panels um, that we've been dealing with, the life expectancy on that. So um, the way that the building is designed, um, and I'm, I, I can show you where it's laying. This I can show you. Where the building is on the property. Thank you. Yes is actually designed specifically because of this. So where the property is, where the building is, is actually set in a position where it gets the most sunlight at the most times during the day so that it can have the best benefit on the solar, um, the solar 
refund on it, refund if that's even the right word. Um, so that's why the building is designed where it is and where it was placed where it was as well, in addition to the way that the topography dictated um, that that was the best place um, of the few that we looked at. Um, but this actually incorporated it as well. So questions on that? Okay. Um, so I know a large topic of discussion, as it should be out there, is obviously when there's development, there needs to be clearing of some trees. Um, for this project, for the entire phase one of the project, five acres of trees will need to be removed uh, for this project. What happens when trees are removed and a building or structure is put on a facility is you need to go through what they call a land swap. So what that means is that through an LWCF property, they look at an other piece of land that's out there that actually meets specifications that, um, and I'll read to you exactly what the LWCF does. Um, the money is intended for, L it's called the Land and Water Conservation Fund, LWCF. The money is intended to protect national parks, areas around rivers and lakes, national forests, and national wildlife refugees from development, and to provide matching grants for states and local parks and recreation projects. Over the years, LWCF has also grown and evolved and included grants to protect working forests, wildlife habitats, critical drinking water supplies, and disappearing battlefields, as well as increased use of easements. So why does this matter? This matters quite a bit because with this piece of land that we have, this is a recreation piece of land and it needs to stay recreation. So in order for this to stay recreation, if a piece of, uh, of property is being put on there, we need to be able to pull back some of that recreation land because that's not no longer considered recreation because there's a building on there now. What happens is that there's actually a process and there are specifications of the piece of land that can be utilized for the land swap. And we've identified a number of properties in town, which we can't disclose due to legal reasons. And once it gets to a passing point, then certainly those areas will be looked at and decided which property will be um, used in the land swap. When the land swap is completed, the goal is and will be um, that the rec, Parks and Rec will continue to keep that as Park and Rec land. And the goal of that land that will um, right now has been earmarked um, over what we're, we're taking for trees, um, that we're going to be leaving it untouched with the exception of some walking and biking trails in there. So I'm obviously concerned anytime trees are coming down, but I also am grateful to know that that property that otherwise would be developed is going to be in this land swap and it won't be developed because it's going to be part of the land swap. So it stays preserved trees and preserved land as well. Can you point out exactly where on the map the, the five acres sure. are? Yeah. Because I you know I heard that there was some misinformation online that actually said it was more than that. Well, and, phase one, and I know this I is all about Article that. 4. So okay. Article 4 is, okay. is five acres. Are, when, the, when the second phase comes, uh -huh. there will be additional clearing for soccer field back here. But for Article okay. 4, what we're talking about right now okay. is going to be five acres. And it'll be back in this area, right back in here. Okay. Now, I want to let you know as well that this perimeter, which abuts to 101, right, right along here, there's going to be a 50-foot tree barrier that's going to be left there. So we're not touching 50 feet of trees. Do it depth. Depth. Yeah. But that, do, for pollution and noise prevention. Is okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's not a wildlife thing. That's just no, the visibility that's, yep, noise. That's, yeah. Well, that's more for okay. yeah, it's pollution. It's it's you know okay. noise. It's yeah. just the aesthetics of it, keeping it there. But we're not touching 50 foot of tree line, and we are keeping that there. I know there's been some misinformation that we're eliminating that and taking it down, and that's not okay. the case. That's not happening at all. Okay. Okay. Did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then is, is it required that you put trails on on the five acres that you preserve because required. actually that degrades it as far yeah, as yeah it's not required by any means and yeah. it's something that we're definitely okay. open to discussing okay. it has to be used as a recreation piece of land mm -hmm. so that's why the walking trails would, would allow for that with the least disruption on that okay. and you'd still preserve so much um, okay. of that piece of property but it does have to maintain remain a piece of recreation land and as part of LWCF. That's, since that's lwcf that's a federal program yes. right so that's a permanent status yes permanent protection yeah. right? yes okay. yep yes great question okay thank you um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the building and the drainage and also the fill is going to be some questions I'm sure will come up as they should. So in this project, 
because of where the building is going to be located, there's obviously going to be some digging back there. And there's going to be some, um, let me pull this up one moment, please. There's going to be um, fill that's going to be brought back into the project. And um, <clears throat> currently in the back of the project area where the proposed building is going is considered what they call, um, it's called glacial till is what the, the loam or, or fill is back there right now. What glacial till is, is it's actually boulders and ledge. So with that type of fill that's back there right now, our, um, our drainage is very, very poor back there uh, because it can't drain well back there because it's, it's, um, it's grade C um, loam back there and it's all rock and it's all um, ledge back there. So the draining that we're getting back there is, is not um, really <clears throat> the best for the environment back there anyways. And... Um, We've also um, looked right now at the qual. There are no quality measures back there on the site um, because of um, it's not developed back there. But once we do develop this area, there will be quality measures that will need to be included um, that will be followed. And um, if you look at the, um, I just want to read down here for you real quickly. Um, the water quality erosion control regulations at the state level, they've changed dramatically since the existing park development was done 30 years ago. Um, the measures proposed in the plan um, will include rain gardens and filtration areas um, to clean the waters prior to discharge. And the existing soils are, um, as I said, class C soils, which means that they're mostly boulder and ledge that's in there as well. Um, and there's poor infiltration there. Um, clearing trees will not likely have um, as much effect on runoff and groundwater uh, recharges when more permeable sites are typically cleared. Um, the small wetland area that is proposed, and I can show you exactly where that is, is actually only um, 2,000 square feet, and it's considered to be minor or minimum impact on the project. And what they'll be doing in that area, and I can show you where it is, it's going to be filled because that little um, 2,000 square foot area is going to be part of parking lot. So it's not going to affect any of the wetland issues. However, we will be getting a wetland uh, permit as, as um, required to make sure everything is done up to code and done correctly for there as well. Uh, but that was the only wetland um, identified, which we were really surprised about. Um, we thought that there was a lot more that was going to be back there. But when they did the assessment, um, that was the only area that they found that was wetlands back there. Was that a natural wetlands or was that a... That was a natural wetland. Okay. The wetland that was up front that's been repaired already by the DPW was it was a um, collapse. And that was way up toward uh, Hampton Road. And that's okay. already been repaired. So even if they went and did a reassessment again, they wouldn't even identify that as being a wetland at one point in time. Okay. But this is the only natural wetland that was there. The other wetland that was there was a, um, was a non-natural collapse. Mm -hmm. Great question. Thank you. Um, so something to, to keep in mind, too, um, as a result of the development um, with these areas, um, we will be treating for pollutants, um, reducing all of uh, the pollutants in the water consistent with what straight state regulations are. Um, if no development takes place, runoff will continue to flow untreated into the Dearborn Brook, um, as it currently is um, in that area. Mm -hmm. So from a drainage standpoint, um, we're going to have a um, far better drainage system than we currently have. Um, right now, there's there's a lot of backup. You see a lot of a pooling back there, a lot of area that's not draining well. This is the opportunity not only to have it drain well, but for us to be able to purify that water back there as well, because a lot of that does run into this um, into our drinking water. When you look at um, the Dearborn Brook, when it says it, it can run into it, we want to make sure that that's treated um, as well before it gets down there. And um, as far as the fill goes, 10 to 15 percent um, will be coming from on site on the property. Um, there is 36,000 cubic yards of fill that will be coming into the property. That's over a two year period that we'll be building. Um, so they, it does require quite a bit of fill because of the topography of this, um, of this property. Um, some of the fill um, will be, um, will be um, structural fill and that will be right underneath the building. And we have a specific structural engineer that is, God bless you, 
that comes in just to specifically deal with the building structure to make sure that that structural fill holds and will hold the stand of time, the test of time under that building. All of the rest of the fill is, as you asked, is drainage grade, um, drainage grade soil. Okay. So it will um, allow for better drainage um, as well. Um, and it will also allow for better, um, better vegetation in that area. Um, what we're planning on doing in that back area that's going to be drainage is once the drainage is put in, we're going to put wildflowers and allow it to revegetate. Um, we don't plan on keeping it exposed. And fortunately, the way that that drainage system works, we don't have to keep it exposed. So we can actually revegetate the whole area. Um, on top of um, that, we are adding a number of trees. I don't have a number. I wish I did. Somebody asked. We don't have a number. We are adding a lot of trees to this project. Parking lot, perimeters. We're actually adding an entire wall of trees that run along the line of uh, the Acadia Drive of Butters. It actually uh, blocks off their view of the parking lot currently. Um, so they'll have a nice privacy border there and a safety border. Um, the Abravite trees that are going to be put in place there are going to grow up to 32 feet. So they'll actually go beyond their porch levels and give them some privacy there that they don't currently have. What is the species? Uh, the Abravite trees. We're going to have some. Is that a native? Yeah. Uh, um, I'm not sure if Abravites are native. Do you know they're native? Is it? Yeah, she believes it is. I'm not sure. I can't speak to that, whether it's native. But I do know that the trees we're planting in the park are definitely native trees, and we're looking at that. And when you um, say the part that you're revegetating, that's part of what's cleared and where the wetlands are? Yes. And like approximately how many acres would you be revegetating? The whole area back here. I'll show you where it is. So the whole five acres? Not the whole five acres. So, because okay. a part of that is going to be the building okay. right here as well right. and some of the parking lot. But right. this whole area back here, we're going to revegetate. Okay, this so maybe area. a couple acres worth. It possibly. Okay. Yeah, I could get you a more definitive okay. number um, on okay. what this would be back here, but this whole mm -hmm. area we're planning on revegetating so that first and just of all, letting parks, it be. Well, we want to let it be number one because mm -hmm. of the benefits that it has, but mm -hmm. also Parks and Rec doesn't want to mow it. They don't want to have to go back there and mow this up. Well, that's so. not a sustainable thing <laughs> anyway, anyway. So yeah. But you yeah. know, so but it, it benefits so much. There's right. no need not yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and it adds such a beautiful character. So we want to keep the beauty of the park. Yeah. It's such a pretty park down there. Okay. Um, and we want to keep it a beautiful park. That's our goal is just okay. to, to keep it a nice place. Somebody had mentioned Central Park. We're like, we're not trying to build Central Park. That's, it's beautiful. Central Park's beautiful, but lots of concrete yeah, in Central Park. Yeah, I was going to say, I know, I know how beautiful, it's beautiful for New York City, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but. we don't want concrete. We don't <laughs> yeah. want concrete. Yeah. So, so that whole area, our goal is to revegetate back there. Um, and put as many trees as we can possibly in here. But like I said, we've been very, very conscious um, when doing this project with um, figuring out what the needs are and what the mm -hmm. wants are. And this has really come down to a needs-based project. I mean, the building is a need. We have to have that down there for, for the inclement weather. We have to have the senior center down there. We have to have Meals on Wheels. Um, we need some extra space down there for meeting rooms. We're out of meeting rooms in town. Um, the um, gym in that building has a rubberized floor that can be used for multi-purposes. So if we want to have, you know, elections or have a dance or have anything down there, it's actually set up to be able to do that and utilize that space for it. Um, so we've really made it so that we can utilize that space for everything and anything that we want to do. Um, one thing that we've been discussing as well, because Greg is on the, um, the tree committee as well, um, the Arbor Day Festival is so great every year. It's an amazing festival that we have. One of the things we'd like to start incorporating, if this gets through on Tuesday, is we'd like to start incorporating those little yearling trees that everyone gets to take home, that we start plant, doing a plant in the park. And so if people want to take them home and plant them at their home, we're obviously going to allow them to do that, because that's their plant. But our goal is to make part of Arbor Day Festival for everybody to come down sure. and plant their trees okay. and right. start to really fill in these areas with the stuff from Arbor Day. So, I mean, we're already thinking, you know, forefront of what we can be doing um, from a community-based and, and environmentally community-based um, as well. Um, what didn't I hit on? I think I've kind of gone through just about uh, everything on here. Uh, what questions do you have? What haven't I touched on? And if I don't know the answer, I can find out for you. I had one back on the solar sure. project. So have you guys done any calculations for if the solar panel would cover so many town buildings, mm -hmm. what the cost savings would be? And I understand there's a, 
you know, installation cost and, and all of that, but just the cost savings and utilities. Yep, there actually is not an installation cost. They actually install that. That's oh, so what, it's um, free? Yeah, actually, okay. it's interesting. That's what Revision Energy actually mm -hmm. installs them. They completely install them for us, and then at the end, we can decide whether we want to buy them back um, by whether we've gotten the cost savings. So the benefit of doing this process is that they install them, they put them on. We have five years to pay whatever their rate is, which is lower than our normal utility rate. Mm -hmm. So we'd still be paying less no matter what anyways, based on the locked-in rate that they would have. But over that five years, that's where we would get that number because there's no way for okay. us to know until okay. it starts to go. So it's kind of a great process that we're able to test it out to mm -hmm. see whether our town can benefit. I know that um, Brentwood, Durham, um, Dover, uh, uh, Barrington, they've all got panels right now. Um, okay. through revision. Mm -hmm. um, so we were saying we're behind the eight ball. We really need to get going. Mm -hmm. You had a question? Yeah, so they they essentially become the utility for us. They broker it to the yes. to the larger brokerage and they keep the brokerage kickback as well. So they, they basically operate the utility. Yes, they become okay. our third party. Okay. Yes. Yep, they become our third party. Correct. Okay. In the in the plans uh, to revitalize the and build the community center, are there also plans to sort of update the the town pool and the the courts and so forth? It's a great question. Yes. Yeah. So our courts are are going to be you know updated anyways. Um, I know that the fencing is going to be completely updated. It, that was in the process for last year, actually, that was put in. So that should be coming up as well. The pool house is actually going to be part of phase two, which we hope to have happen during phase one. Um, what we're doing is as soon as, you know, if this gets approved on Tuesday, on Wednesday, our friends of REC start to sit down and say, all right, now we start fundraising. We fundraise hard. That is for the walking path around the um, facility for an additional soccer field and for the exterior of the pool house, which is yeah. not going to be Green Bay Packer green and yellow anymore. Yeah. Uh, sorry for our it's Packers scary. fans in town, but it is going to actually mirror the outside of the building in the back. So it's okay. going to look just like that. Um, and we were also working with some individuals that are going to help us work inside and to update and renovate the inside as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the dangers, obviously, when you make this beautiful island uh, in town for people to come to uh, is the concern about getting there. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to me about multimodality, mm -hmm. so uh, what the pedestrian and bike access looks like, and not just on the facility, but drawing people to the facility. You know, you talked earlier before about the, the, the crossing sign that got run over and dragged mm -hmm. down the road four times. Right. Um, what... Uh, what extends beyond the boundary of the park that you're working with the town on to improve yeah. bike and pedestrian access? Yeah, and it's a great question too. And actually we've had, we have a group of people that are working on trying to move forward with complete streets. That's right. been something that we've really been looking into. Um, I know Jason Pru is very passionate about that. Um, that is actually, once, once I come down off this project, that's actually gonna be my next project to jump on board with. Okay. Um, so that is something that we're actively, um, aggressively speaking to. We're hoping to be able to work with the town to be able to get uh, potentially I say potentially because we don't know what can come to us, but we know that they've been bike paths and bike lanes and stratum that have been um, gone to CMS. Um, we're hoping to have some access from that end of town, from right. Guinea Road and that end of town. That wouldn't be through Parks and Rec. That would actually be through DPW. Sure. And we know that there are a lot of grants that are available um, as well out there um, to be able to do that. We just need to get the process going. And it's something that we have a big coalition of people. We'd love for you to join us sure. to um, work on trying to get that done because right. it's it's been an issue for a long time. Um, so that is definitely our next project because we want to make sure that it is... So Safety to get issue. To. Yeah. Yeah. Um, plus, we also hope at some point our kids can bike to school like they used to at Lincoln Street School. I'd love yep. to see my kids exactly. be able to bike at CMS again. Um, so we definitely have been looking into that. One of the things to keep in mind, too, one of the areas um, down in that area, they're problematic. We see a lot of car accidents historically down there. People get rear-ended in that area. One of the reasons why is when we look at weekends, people are crossing that street constantly because they're parking over on that side. Sure. Now, bikers, we need to certainly be cautious of always, and that's something that we're going to need to figure out the best way to make sure we re-insure safety. Well, that's that. kind, of, kind of where I'm going. You just you just invited 100 more cars yep. into a place, and, yep. and this is unfortunately a town where I see you know, SUV line after SUV yep. line up in front of, you know, CMS and, and yep. you know, Parks and Rec in the summer when you're dropping your kids off for, mm -hmm. for day camp. It's just... 
we're just we're just inviting more more Agreed. more cars, and Agreed. so that just raises my alarm and yep. concern for for pedestrian bike access. Yeah, so. as it did for us as well. Yeah. So first of all, if you look at the parking flow in there, so inside the parking lot as well, we've got a whole parking flow that sends traffic to the side rather than going through the parking lot. So I'll show you exactly where, and this is a big deal. So the parking the lot is going to come in this way, and right now it comes in and people drive down here. And you see it, or they drive through here. Sure. People are crossing left and right in here. Yeah. The, and we know it. We see it all the time. So the, tr the road is going to come in. It's going to run down this way. And it's going to go into the back parking lot here. If you come in this way, you're going to access parking over this way. Nice There's a drop-off right there. So when you talk about campers, we have a drop-off so that people don't have to come in, get out, and drop their kids. There's going to be a counselor waiting there sign in their kids there. The only time that we're going to have you park your car is if there's a problem with your kids. So if you get asked to pull your car over, we know there's a penalty problem. Box, right? That's right. You know that you're going in the penalty box. I just, I'm yeah. just wondering, can everyone at home hear you when you're talking here? I don't, I'm they, do not you know? sure. You tell Close me. it up to a microphone. She's called. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I have okay. a very big mouth, I'm told. Okay. Home, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. If they have an issue, they usually come out. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Because so, you're answering lots of questions. So the road is going to come down this way right here. Okay. Um, so that it's going to avoid being in this parking lot at all times if it can. As far as the crossing issue over here, one of the issues that we run into with people crossing is because they're having to park over here. Yeah, exactly. Where we've opened those parking spaces, we've brought them in safely to the side so they're coming through this way so people can actually come in and access this. A lot of the rear ends that we see coming in this way as well is because people are stopping to let people cross from sure. the parking lot. Yeah. So we're going to be eliminating quite a bit of that. We've been talking about whether we do a blinking light there. We've been talking about safety precautions that we're going to take there. There's some things that we're definitely still pursuing on that. Okay. Um, and it will be, it is in the forefront. Safety is number one for doing this project. Okay. So that is something. But we have eliminated the crossover in the parking lots here. We've eliminated people having to go um, across the parking lots as well. What about people who walk here or bike yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah, bike, we, bike, like bike racks. They don't drive here, access, right. yeah. but right. you walk to this whole, like, what about that? Yeah, for those people as well, right now we're working on what we're going to do as far as a safety component because there has to be one put in there crossing that street for sure. Is there even um, a sidewalk from the road? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's always there's a sidewalk right over okay. here all the way down to here. No, I mean, uh, for, into the park, I mean. So you don't have to walk down the driveway. Oh yeah, goes down the side. Okay. It's been there. That one's okay. going to stay there. Okay. Yeah, the parking that's there, that lane that's down there, that's going to stay there. Okay. And that's where kids, you see kids bike down that right. one. Right. Okay. We're yeah. keeping that there. That's the safe access for kids to come in and for walking to come in. And it's right by the playground too, so you can go right into the playground if people are walking in. They can just go right in. So the area that we're going to be trying to work with here, and it's part of working with the DPW, working with the town, is this area right here, right. just that cross. But from a park standpoint, once you get in there, we've made every safety adjustment that we can so that people have the safest um, outing once they get in there as well. Does that answer your questions, as I can on that? And, and like I said, as far as this crosswalk, it's been something that we've been working on for years, and it's something we're working with the town on as well to figure out what we can do best as the town, because that area is not a part of the rack issue, but it is certainly an issue that we need to address. Do you, do you know in the specification if you know how many bike spaces you'll have, how many bike rack spaces? I don't, but we actually had that discussion the other day okay. because kids, my kids ride their bikes down. Sure. They've never had an issue. Um, lots of kids in the summer ride sure. their bikes down. They've never had an issue, but if we need to increase those, we can certainly increase cool. those. Awesome. So that was a discussion we had. We and we're we're also, to, um, I, I've looked at the pedestrian and bike access to that, you know, because yeah. this pending project. I mean, if you look at it, you don't have anything to the east. There isn't anything. It's basically the, the that crossing. That's where the sidewalk stops. So we did look at we started we, we did look at preliminary looking at right away yeah. and seeing what challenges there are, utility poles and so forth to get to Guinea Road and possibly up to the. Uh, middle school sure uh, you know ideally all the way but you know right now Guinea Road to the east and then as Holland Way actually we had the planning board and myself we we um, we required them to put in a sidewalk uh, to Hampton Road and the right. DTC lawyers so they have the sidewalk that connects the park yeah it ends right there and then and then it goes around the corner Holland Way, a short section of it doesn't. Most of Holland Way is sidewalk right. and goes to Portsmouth Ave. There's one section that doesn't and probably because of topography, because they have a guardrail and it drops off steep into some wet area, but it does have a wide shoulder, like a okay. 10, 12 foot shoulder. So Holland Way getting from Portsmouth Ave to Holland Way is, is pretty safe. Pretty good, yeah, yeah. Uh, then we looked at the other way going toward town. If you know, if you go, I'm sure you know, you live in the area, yeah. 
if you're coming from town, uh, out by, I forget what lane that is, but the Mayo Eye Clinic or something like that, there's a crossing. The, the sidewalk is on one side of the street and then jumps across to the other mm -hmm. and doesn't continue on that side. And we looked at that, and that's a combination of a few factors. One is uh, some dry laid stone pri uh, private walls. A uh, couple of big, significant trees. I think that's why they jumped over. Then, when you get around the corner, there's some wetland uh, challenges right up against the road. Yeah. But I guess the point is, is, we're we're looking at that to see, you know, like okay, if this moves forward, how do we get, you know, how do, what do we do, and and tap into some, you know, grants and so forth, or yeah. or a sidewalk improvement fund to try to get people safely pedestrian and bikes. Great. And the DPW has been pretty. Uh, forward thinking when they do their uh, redo roads and stuff like Hampton Falls, if they don't have the bike lane, if they have it, they'll stripe it out. If they don't, they'll uh, paint sharrows. Yeah. So that's been kind of a... a yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity to have this kind of forward-looking thing because, you yeah. know, to get money for, from, uh, you know, Safers to School or uh, Complete Streets, things mm -hmm. like that, the money gets allocated from the federal transportation budget to the states, but you have to have your, your stuff in. Uh, and advanced it to get it. So having this kind of forward-looking uh, yeah. thing is a good idea. So yeah, yeah, we're aware of that, and, and those are definitely on. You know, all depending on what happens, um, but definitely will be is being looked at. Awesome. We've been bugging Dave for a long time about this. <laughs> He's been hearing it from us for a long time. So the discussions have been had for a long time awesome. too, and I'm looking forward to moving forward on that too. And hopefully, this will be a driving factor to finally say, "Hey, it's time. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it." What other questions do you have for me? I know you have a big agenda tonight. I've taken a lot of your time. Oh, God, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is not too great. <laughs> Was that a yes or a no? No, nope, I'm, I'm good. So, all right. Um, I, I guess the, the one question that I had is because I, I know that from having been working on the sustainability efforts here for over a year, mm -hmm. um, that most of the people in town were supportive most of the people, like working in town offices, mm -hmm. were really supportive of things. And I know Greg was like over the top supportive. Yeah. And so I know he's, it's it's in his heart to get this right. It's in all our heart to get it right. Yeah. Right. And and I also know you've been hit on some yeah. and I, sustainability issues, which, mm -hmm. I, you know, I kind of took seriously. And yeah. then I went and questioned, you know, privately kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. And a lot of which it I was, appreciate sort of, um, you know, unfounded mm -hmm. uh, misinformation. But I appreciate I, that. We want more people to do that. I, I guess that's, um, I, I know you're doing something on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And can you remind us exactly what that Absolutely. is? Absolutely. Okay. There's going to be an open house on Saturday at the 3230 Court Street property. That's the um, rec building and the current senior center. We will be giving tours of the buildings, and we will also have a question and answer desk set up. So if you have any questions, please bring the questions to us and we'll be able to get your answers and clarifications. So if you have questions or something came to you that may not seem right or you're hearing swirl out there, please come to us because our hope is that we eliminate swirl. Our goal through this whole process is to make sure that every single person has all of the facts on the project so that when they step into that booth on Tuesday, they can make their decision based on what's right for their family, based on the community, based on the town, based on the facts not based on swirl, because swirl's not going to get our community anywhere. What time is the open house? Uh, oh, good question. Thank you. 9 to 12 on Saturday. And then uh, Friends of Rec is also uh, hosting an alumni Bruins hockey game afterwards, um, and that will be supporting the Friends of Rec, which is a fundraiser toward this project if it passes, and if not, it'll be toward other rec um, projects that we have. And that's going to be at the, um, at the uh, ice rink at 1. That should be really fun. It should be a good time. So our goal um, for coming today was really to let you know kind of the components that we've incorporated, to pull in some components, which was great. I'm going to be bringing back um, to our group um, the Reclaim Water. That's a great suggestion, and i um, looking forward to see if we can kind of incorporate it. Um, but we've also received, um, as I don't know if you saw in the, in the Exeter newspaper, we got a glowing endorsement from the Energy Committee um, on the project. And our hope is not for you to say to me right now that, you know, we're giving you a glowing endorsement, but if you feel like you'd like to endorse the project uh, based on the sustainability components, um, you still have till tomorrow to get in a uh, letter to the editor and get that out, but that's up to you. I won't tell you to do it if you feel compelled to do it. Um, I know we'd appreciate it, and the town would really appreciate what you have to say based on um, your backgrounds. Awesome. 
All right. I look forward to hopefully working with you guys in the future on this. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming down. And Thank going you so much this for having me. Thanks. And, I'm feel, go back and to feel bed. better. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to bed now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a wonderful night. Thanks. Huh? Is there can call to excuse you? I don't know. They're not answering. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I know. Yeah, I, I have okay. to. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who can speak to the sustainability fair? Our, our next issue we, is the sustainability fair. We and haven't like discussed in okay. person. Um, okay. and yeah, there's we, like some, yeah um, we had a couple issues for to get to get together for a meeting uh, and then we had we wanted to actually have a discussion tonight uh, about uh, just feasibility for planning and things like that so what I suggest we do is uh, it's continue the subcommittee committee meeting uh, we're gonna push it out and, and meet within the next week or so and okay we can update because I know Lucy has to go right yeah now exactly you. okay okay all right okay okay um, there was any date selected for that yet right? not yet no that's one of the topics right. so and, and and to and you know part of the part of the choice making was you know we we before we turned the the mics on tonight we were talking about things in other areas of business and things where there are a lot of things are getting postponed and, and pushed off given the current you know global health issues so we're trying to keep that in mind like how far out do you plan something to make sure you're clear of the problem so uh, that's something we want to talk about a little bit too so but. okay all right so. Is there anything else on? Nope, we'll have an update, a uh, more substantial update next next meeting. Okay. And then for Stephanie, I'm sorry, I was a little distracted by you You're telling me I had to leave. I don't know if we need to. Um, we'll we, we'll want to just get uh, with Chetna and talk about doing whether we want to have uh, an endorsement letter or not. And it has to be done by tomorrow. Well, yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so I think we have a quorum here, so we could vote on that if there's any discussion of that. Yep. Yeah, worth opening up the topic, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other any comments from you, Dave, as, the, as a planner on the the um, I don't know what uh, article so number, number four. It's yeah. more in Article four. four, the Parks and Rec thing. Just uh, no, I you know we don't take a position. We just present okay. you the facts and so forth, right. and don't okay. say you know oh do this do that. It's okay for us okay. to take a position. Okay, I thought we couldn't take a position. On Oh yeah, we can. We can. Just, we just. I mean, you did on the. I'm just going by, you know, how you feel, and then uh, you, you supported the citizens' petition, yeah. right? You, on Granite, Granite Page Pipeline, right. correct? At the last meeting, I, I wasn't there, but I watched it. Right, we did. We endorsed then, it. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so we can certainly endorse it, and that's what we have the option to do now: is we can endorse Article Four. Right, and then. Or not, and so if there's any discussion between letter. us. Are we endorsing? the sustainability factors of article four or are we so are we uh endorsing article four we're endorsing article four i would believe based on what was presented tonight and that's the actually the one question members. i didn't really get to ask her is I, I, and maybe somebody else knows or maybe dave even you know if it's from a just a facts perspective but i know there's signs both ways up in town I don't know what the arguments against it are unless it's purely just you know taxpayers and cost <laughs> I mean, you'd have. I mean, I was at a lot of the meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but I, I, I don't know. I, I it, I'd have to sit down and think and re try to remember <laughs> yeah, what everyone true. said. There was a lot of people that spoke on both sides. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I don't know if I. Because a lot of the things me. I've heard or seen online, especially on regards to sustainability, um, really didn't hold up once you got all the facts. <laughs> you know, like they were. Yeah, but. There's got to be some legitimate issues out there, and if it comes down to, I know, just some people are opposed to any increase in your taxes. I think this, which is why I asked phase, about if this would offset taxes by the savings potentially from solar for all the buildings, and that's an unknown, I think. But my understanding is that this is just phase one. Like this is to approve it. Like yes, let's go forward with this project, and then there'll be more discussion. I mean, these are just proposed. You know, this isn't part necessarily of the project right now this is just proposals i thought Keep that was i thought the solar stuff was phase one is that correct correct yeah the solar is all so part all of phase one on already all this is decided on if if it goes through i don't know i didn't get one of those so i'm not sure exactly what you're looking at <laughs> okay so well, i think the phase two was buildings the, adding soccer fields is soccer fields an additional parking 
Yeah, soccer, and that would have to go through planning board and all of that type of stuff. Every, well, so would this, but anyway, it wouldn't just be a given that you automatically get phase two with phase one. Um, it's no, additional parking in addition to this, like. So phase one has 100 new spots and then phase two has more spots? That's what I am led to believe. That's I mean, my I do have a plan set. I, I do. It. I got a, there's been several reiterations. Yeah. I've been trying to keep up with the plans. Thank I don't you. have a copy of the, of the I had some, look, reviewed them, but then um, Rec got them back. So I, I believe my understanding, and I and, and Greg Bison presented to Riverwoods last night uh, at the candidates forum that I was at as well. And uh, I, I believe that's a, the understanding was phase one, phase two would add parking spots but I don't know that park design I don't know if that's completed I came back to okay. Your okay great because I don't know what they have <laughs> okay the park all right design. come on back yeah. I like the okay. listening to yeah. this I'm like oh wait okay. <laughs> so we want to be clear what would be voted on in on the article that's before the voters article 4 to be real clear what's included in yep. that and what's not included and would be a separate decision later on. Yes. Is so, that park design, yep. that handout, yes. is that phase one? That doesn't all, include phase two. That is all phase one, not phase two. Okay. okay. Sorry, There'd I just There'd be more up the parking stairs. somewhere in phase two? Yes, so in phase two, what's gonna happen? Oh, here we are, here. <laughs> <laughs> I ran for you guys. So in, <laughs> and it's worth it. So in phase two, what's going to be added is over here, there's going to be a soccer field added and there's going to be additional parking that's going to be added off this parking. Okay. So we'll get additional parking over there, probably about 70 spots over there okay. additionally. And then a walking path already with what's clear cut already. It's going to go around the entire park vicinity is and then the outside of the pool house. So it, now, in, I'm sorry. I was just, it's phase two. Is that something that would be voted on next year? No, or actually, is that... phase two is going to be done through fundraising. Okay. And through grants. And so what we have um, is the Friends of Rec. Um, <coughs> um, Friends of Rec is a committee that was pulled together, a group pulled together. Their sole purpose is for fundraising. And um, what they do is they're able to pull together fundraising from um, different um, organizations in town. We have what we call a 501c3 now, which is the ability for us to ask for fundraising or ask for um, funding from businesses and they're able to write it off now. Right. We didn't have that in the past, but we have it now. So this gives us the opportunity to actively and ask for money for the project. Um, so phase two is going to be through the fundraising efforts. Um, our president of our Friends of Rec successfully raised $250,000 for softball that went into renovating all of our softball fields down there. So he's in a very, very good position um, as our president to be able to guide us through the proper chains we need to get to to get this phase two done. Our goal is that once this gets voted through, I'm going to say once it does, that's me being optimistic, right? Um, once it gets voted through on Tuesday, on Wednesday, we start the process and we sit down and we say, how are we going to raise money for phase two? We've already got the money put forward. We got to put the RFP through and everything for phase one. Now, how are we going to raise money for phase two? Because our goal is that while phase one is being built, we raise the money to be able to incorporate phase two while phase one is being done. We don't want this to be a process that once it stops, then we start with phase two because those are essential components as well. They're not functional components. Um, we need the, how, the um, community center. We need the playground. We need the extra parking. We definitely need the soccer field, but it isn't so that the department can function right now, but we want to get it in before phase one is done if we can. Okay, and the renovation of the pool, mm -hmm. that's only the exterior of the pool house, It is. Unfortunately, whoever um, came up with the original plan of where to put this pool, I'm not sure where their mind was when they were doing it, but where the, and that's what made it such a struggle from a topography standpoint and from a planning standpoint was we really had to plan around this pool because originally when we thought about let's just blow it up and start a new pool, right? $5 million was what that was going to cost us. Wow. So we said, okay, well, the pool's good size. We're getting good use out of it. It's in great condition, great condition. Um, so 
we're going to be, you know, updating the perimeter of it. Like the um, apron around it and... What's that? The apron around it. Yeah, I mean, it's there. actually in really, really good shape, but the areas that need to be fixed up are going to be fixed up for sure. Okay. Um, the pool area, shockingly, the pool is really in great shape. Um, and the inspectors take a look at it. I mean, it's in wonderful shape. Um, unfortunately, just where it's located created a bit of a challenge. But the bigger challenge was, to, were we going to add $5 million onto this for something that we use for 90 days? You know, if that. Um, we use it for nine weeks. I think it's open nine or ten weeks of the year. So it really didn't make sense for us to kind of blow that up and do an entirely new pool area for nine weeks in New England to use that because we do have it. Um, and it's functional, very functional. Okay, okay but you, the in phase summer. two, there's mm -hmm. fundraising for the interior locker rooms. Yes, the yep. well. yeah. yeah, and one of the things, too, that's really great about this town is we have, and a lot of them don't want their names to be out there, but we have a lot of local... Mm -hmm. Um, either contractors or um, landscapers or whatnot that give us a great deal of pro bono time um, and effort in, in helping us to renovate and put things together as well. Um, and it's amazing who comes to the table uh, to say, hey, I want to help you out with this project, but don't, don't put my name out there, which is, I love it. It's amazing. We have it happen every year. And um, I don't see this being any different either. All right. One other question. The location of the new parking lot mm -hmm. in the building... Um, it kind of seems like you have parking going through where there would be walking in between the building and the pool or the mm -hmm. building and everywhere else. Yeah. Why are, <clears throat> is there a reason there that the building here and the parking lot here, or could they be flipped so there's less parking and car intersection? Let me between? take a look at that because that's actually, um, we had a number. Is there a reason? I just wasn't, yeah. I assumed there was a reason yeah, for it. I just, just it yeah. Chris, you were just talking about why wouldn't these two be yep, exactly. places? Yeah. yeah. The reason we didn't, because we had 16 different plans, and one plan it was on the other side, and it just, there was something with it that didn't work. Because of the okay. sinkhole. Okay. No, <laughs> there was okay. no getting around here, really, or didn't want to, because like, you got to have it drop yeah. off. <laughs> And, you know, you mean pull the building up here? No, just have them, like, pull the building this way, like, where the they, parking yeah, lot is. Yeah, they had the building over yeah, here. Uh -huh. just, just curious, like, just, why these aren't switched. And then switched, it was all, you know, right next to our stacked on top of each other. Because then you have less than you have people driving. Okay. okay. People coming from this this area, yes. you have to drive, basically driving across pedestrian. Correct. Okay. Oh, that's right. It was pedestrian walkway there as well. But there was, yeah, we had to remove all of if we did that. And they were all being built over here with more... Originally. Right, but... Yeah. I guess I'm just like not not moving, but like mm -hmm. just scooting it this way in the parking lot. Not so easy. It seems okay. like an easy fix. Okay. But our original plan, which would have been oh, um, really yeah, not like huge about change, three million dollars but... more, would have been to move these back here. We originally had the tennis courts moving back here, right? Which would have put the building over here. But the reason why the building had to go over here is because, as, as Dave said, he's correct. When we moved it over here, you did have to eliminate these over here to shift this building over because of the way the topography was there. Okay. Um, so it had to be eliminated over that way. Okay. Um, and so that was going to be an additional, I believe it was $2.5 million to move those over. Plus it would have disrupted this entire neighborhood over here to have tennis over there, just like the original parking lot back there that we eliminated. Yes. Yeah. It's just like not knowing the topography. Yeah, it's like, why don't, yeah. like yeah, not moving the tennis course, was, not moving anything else, yeah. but just the building here, yeah. the parking lot here. And looking yeah, at it, like yeah. sliding it up and over. That. Yeah. And then you don't kind well, of approach. Then I'll, you don't have Yeah, because like, yeah. If you don't have to have people going right. across the parking lot. So this area back here, oh, just so you know, there was a, was it a 35 foot drop? Was it the Gordon said? There was a, a yeah, big it's, drop It's, it's all here. steep, yeah. But so in order to move that back there. I, I'm just she's not. <laughs> she, she's right just here. saying, I mean, the parking lot's a little skinnier. It yeah. is. And yeah. there is some, you know, slope here. Um, but taking this building, say, say you had a little cutout of the building yeah. and moving it right up into this area. Yeah. So it's just like on top of the parking lot, and then yeah. the parking lot goes over here. Yeah, that was, I believe that was a whole topography issue. Okay. We'll get back to you 100% on okay. that one. But I remember we originally yeah. had that flipped, okay. and it was a topography issue, and it was also the ledge that went off that was such a steep drop. Because if you look at the fields, these were all filled at one point. Mm -hmm. So the fields are actually kind of in levels. If you actually look they at them are, like that, yeah. they are. So in order to move this over there, the topography, the way that it's set up, it wasn't set up the best to have it over there. But we'll get the definite. Reason, I'm, I'm almost positive because we had like 16 different plans and one of the plans had it over there and they said mm, that's definitely not going to work. Okay. And most of it had to do with the topography of this property. Okay. It's a very interesting property um, when you look at it, but we own it. 
you know, so it's our property. It's our registration. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll be but proud. we own it, and so it makes sense for us to continue to use that and to not just leave it there unused. Uh, what, what is I'll this? break on the trees. I'll talk to Ty and Bond Can about I? that. Try to get, okay. you know get an answer yeah. to see see what you know because yeah, it's not. I mean, this isn't you know out to bid plants. You know, okay. at this point, right. and they still have to go. They still have to go to the planning board and select board, or well, they have to send the plans on the planning board and select board if it passes. The planning board and the select board can opt to have a public hearing and provide their non-binding comments. Okay. So there's still a process after that for things to you know okay. uh, get tweaked in this. Um, so, but I'll bring that up. Yes. Uh, I'll find out. Yeah, our, our discussion and the reason that you came back in yeah. was because we were <laughs> questioning <laughs> whether to support this this project or not um, from the sustainability uh, standpoint. Okay. And a question came up as to yeah. if you could tell us some arguments against um, building the rec center. Yeah, what have you heard? What, what, what have you, what's been put before you as far as uh, yeah. uh, and the things that have been put against it that yeah. we've heard has been the removal of the trees, which if you're going to be developing anything, it's going to be removed. Um, the same individuals have also mentioned, can we move it to a different location? Well, we've looked at that, and if we did that, we'd be removing 14 acres of trees rather than the seven acres of trees because then we'd have to add the tennis courts, we'd have to add the pools, we'd have to add this. And additionally, it would be over $22 million from what we looked at when Ty and Bond looked at the, um, the property that potentially could have housed this. Um, which there was really only one that potentially could have housed it. Um, so that's the biggest pushback we're hearing. Um, we are certainly getting some pushback from uh, the abutters on the side um, where Acadia is, understandably, um, because they do live right on a park. Um, but we are doing, like I said, we're doing the best we can to make sure we do privacy and safety borders on the side along their property line because... Their arguments are uh, increased uh, activity in the park, increased traffic, uh, and, and those sorts of things, or...? It's, it's increased activity. Um, the fact that we're going to be developing there yeah. um, is a concern for them. Um, and, you know, if I lived on the property, I would say yes as well. Of course, it's going to be a concern. But they did buy in a park, and I do have a lot of sympathy for them on that. So what we are doing is the best that we can as we're putting a tree border so that they get privacy. And we're also putting a fence border because my concern as well is that they have children over there and that road is running along there. I don't want a child running through the Abravite trees or whatever trees we have there that are, that are um, privacy trees and crossing in front of those cars. So we're also gonna have a fence there for a safety standpoint. Um, unfortunately, the park is the park land that we have. Um, it's not conservation land, it's land that we always planned on renovating and we've been working on this renovation process for six years now. Um, and the entire time that road was always going to be running there for a safety component. Um, so as some people saw, we were able to concede on some things such as the parking lot that was in the back corner originally in the original plans. Um, we heard from the abutters, we met with them and it was going to disrupt their entire neighborhood on Wayside Drive. And it didn't make sense to do that there. And it wasn't essential to the plan. It wasn't essential to safety. It wasn't essential to productivity down there from a rec standpoint. Um, so we removed that. We eliminated that. We've been very open to working with people that have concerns. This road, unfortunately, is not something we could concede on because it is a safety component that it, no matter which way you slice and dice it, if it doesn't go on that side, it's running through traffic and through pedestrians. Um, so what we're doing to hopefully you know, offset that is to build the full side, you know, put up the trees that are going to go up to 32 feet past their their porches and give them nice privacy, which is going to be a far better view than they have now. Um, and it'll also probably do some noise buffer there with those trees there. And then the fence for the safety as well. So those have been um, really the two pushback pieces that we've had. Um, we've had pushback. Uh, people have uh, mentioned something about for the current drain water, how it's it's really a good system, but that's one of those things where factually that's not accurate because right now it is all ledge and stone. So the filtration system back there is atrocious. So that's one of those areas where we want people to understand the facts and not the swirl of what they're hearing. Um, we are having a logger is going to be um, taking the trees and utilizing them as well. Um, another thing that we're hearing is people are saying we're taking down um, all the trees that buffer and border 101, we're not. We're leaving a 50-foot border of trees, which is comparable to what um, Exeter Farms has abutting um, 101. Yeah. So if you ever drive through there, you'll see what their, their abutting 
um, tree line property is there, and it's it's very it's very peaceful back there. Um, well, and, and part of that, if if this diagram is right, yeah. is since you're clearing the five acres, mm -hmm. but you're offsetting that with land and water conservation fund, which is permanent protection, and this was never permanently protected anyway. Right. So you're offsetting it with something permanent, and then revegetating what looks like, and I don't know if this is exactly to scale, mm -hmm. but you know, maybe at least a third of that. Yeah, I wish I could tell you the exact amount. And I think I talked to Greg about that, but I don't remember what the exact number yeah. was, but maybe a third to a half of that. Yeah, I'd be more comfortable with him giving that to, information. That's a, right adjacent to that buffer. Right. So that really makes your buffer go beyond 50 feet right. at some point. Yeah, okay. at some point, yeah, it's going okay. to go up. I mean, yeah. our goal is to have that all vegetated again. Yeah, Dave? Yeah, and just to chime in on the, the other places, uh, Greg, you know, other opportunities or places in town, you can do that. I mean, I scoured, you know, the aerials and the properties and all our town properties for Greg because he had asked. And really all our town on land is all under con conservation or being utilized, you know, um, maybe except the existing uh, rec, you know, uh, facility. But there really wasn't anything private land there might have been a few opportunities but a couple of things there you had to purchase it right. you didn't own it so there's an additional expense mm -hmm. and there's something to be said for keeping things together it's like mm -hmm. do you want you know i think they want the community center so because they have their kids they have the pool have there. there they you know it it makes sense to put those uses together mm -hmm. so and, and then mm -hmm. otherwise you'd, you'd have to go out and purchase uh, some other property and there was sure. actually a study that was done, it was an unbiased study that was done in 2015 by the Turner Group, and it was a facilities-based study that looked at all the facilities in town, and it kind of went through what needed to be replaced, what needed to be repaired. Um, under Parks and Rec, they essentially said, you know, blow up Court Street without, in so many words, I mean, it was, it was really, um, they, need, they wanted those buildings to be, they recommended that we end up doing something different. But to Dave's point, what they put in that, um, Turner Group was that the senior center that needs to be moved based on the conditions and the parks and rec that need to be moved based on those conditions. It stands to reason that they all move together and be put together. Um, and this is from an outside source that looks at facilities and says these belong together anyways. So to Dave's point, um, what we followed for this plan were two things. We follow actually three things. We followed the town master plan. We followed the 2015 um, facilities um, report that we got through the Turner Group. And we also followed the UNH facilities um, study that they did. Um, all unbiased pieces, um, except for obviously the, the town plan, which is what our focus is. We looked at those three pieces and we used them as our, as our maps. And we hit every single point on those. And that's why as much as I really worked hard on the project that was in 2017 that we presented, when it didn't pass, I was exhausted and really disappointed, but I was really happy in the long run because it wasn't the right plan for our town. This is the right plan for our town. So I'm grateful to our voters that didn't vote for that because now we've got something that actually makes sense and we've incorporated our seniors. We didn't incorporate our seniors before. We incorporated all of our offices. We incorporated Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels wasn't incorporated in 2017, but it makes so much sense for them to be with us for, number one, freeing up that property on Court Street, but also because our seniors depend on them a lot of times for their nutritional intake. So if they're in the same location, they get to feed them, and it's less work for Meals on Wheels to not have to deliver. They can just give them the person to take their meals home. So there's just so much together that, that comes together in this that I'm so glad, like I said, it didn't go through three years ago. If you asked me the day after the election last time, I wouldn't have said that, but um, <laughs> the hindsight, right? I'm so glad it didn't go through because it forced us to go back to the drawing board and say, what did we miss? And you know what? Why didn't this population vote for it? You know what? They shouldn't have voted for it. Now we have a place where every single age bracket is hit. Every generation is hit. Every ability is hit. And it's, it's community center for all. We, we've kind of coined the phrase, more than just a park. This is way more than just a park. This is, this is a community center. I mean center, <laughs> everything for our town. Were there any uh, recurring questions or big issues that came up with Riverwoods or did you speak there? I know there's another 
independent living place with off Water Street? Yeah, 277 Water Street. Yep. So 277 mm -hmm. Water Street has been, we've met with them often. Mm -hmm. um, they're very excited about this because they have one room in there that they utilize for their activities, but they like to get out. And they love that they don't go to the senior center very often. They will go every once in a while, but when they go there, it's not really a relaxing environment for them, and it's not a place they can sit around and socialize. They're looking forward to a place to go down. Um, the people at 277 Water Street are so much fun, and they're pistols. I mean, they, I go with Melissa, and we do, um, I do the um, senior programming with them. And I, I laugh all day. I mean, they have so much energy, and they need a place where they can go. They can socialize. They can move around. They can incorporate with kids. They love the idea. Idea that kids are going to be there and they can watch kids play, they can watch kids, you know, doing sports. They love having that interaction. They're really excited about that one. Um, they're excited about having Meals on Wheels there as well because a lot of them get their um, get their meals from there. Um, so majority of the feedback that we've gotten has been very, very positive. Um, and uh, Riverwoods, we actually, um, Greg had a meeting with them today. I wish he wasn't sick, um, so he could give you um, some feedback on that. The feedback that we've gotten from a number of individuals, um, and you can definitely um, speak to Bev as well, because um, I know she's been a part of our discussions from Riverwoods, that they're very excited about the project. They, they need, know it's a need in the community. They know that this is something that the community needs. We have a meeting with them on March 6th. So I wish that this was March 7th so I could give you all their feedback because right. that was the, the time we could get uh, booked up. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd be happy to report back to you what they said. But the people that I've spoken to there so far have been very, very supportive of okay. this program because not only are they looking at themselves, but what I find over there, which is really impressive to me, and I don't know if it's a generational thing, but what I've seen is that a lot of the individuals over there that I've spoken to are looking out for people that may not be able to afford something like they might have. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they admit they've got a beautiful facility at Riverwoods and they're very lucky and blessed to have it. But not every senior in town has that. Sure. And their mindset is that they should have it too. They Absolutely. built up this community. And so they have kind of more, a lot of a give back um, mentality. Yeah. Right. Um, and everyone I've spoken to over there, that's been the feel I've gotten over there has been the give back mentality. And that's been heartwarming to me because for me, that's what I look at in this entire town. I look at, you know, not people that can really afford to go to private places and, and have memberships, but I look at the people that don't and why don't they deserve it too? They're, you know, Agreed. they deserve it just as much as us. And um, I'm heartwarmed when I hear yeah. people make that statement to me. Agreed. So. Uh, I'm gonna ask a tough question sure. and, and it's based on me not having done the homework. Yeah. So, uh, other, what other committees or um, uh, boards or, or groups haven't endorsed it? Have you had any not endorsed? It? Yeah, and it's a good question. The one that we had not endorse us was uh, the facilities committee. Okay. And the facilities committee um, looked at the project, and they are all very, very qualified individuals, um, incredible backgrounds. And I would have loved to have heard the feedback that was um, based on what our building structure was and what the needs of our building were as based on the 2015 facility report that we got from the Turner Group. Mm -hmm. um, what we did get, and, and it's online, you can definitely take a look at it, I'd love for you to pull it up, um, is a report that really looked at um, the town as a whole and it looked at prioritizing on what the town needed and said this is a priority the rec isn't a priority over water. The rec isn't a priority over this. All these things need to be done. Um, I don't disagree that they need to be done. I absolutely agree that they need to be done for sure. But I don't think that it's for a committee to prioritize and make a recommendation based on what their opinions are. I think that the voters should be able to do that. Sure. Um, but if you look on the um, facilities report and you go on the Exeter um, rec page, yeah. you can pull up their full report and I encourage you to do so. Sure. But I also encourage you to read through it and see the responses um, to those res to those questions because we were able to respond to every single concern that they had or they said uh, one of the things was um, have a facilities an independent uh, facilities um, report done yeah. well we did that in 2015 and 2015 told us we needed to do this so with five more years wear and tear sure. on those buildings yeah. I don't think it's going to come back any differently so questions like that um, were answered on there. So definitely take a look and comb through yeah. um, because the select board had that full report when they made the recommendation three to two to move it forward um, for vote. 
So um, had the select board not had that report in hand when they voted to move it forward, then I would say raise an eyebrow yeah. um, to it. But certainly feel free to raise an eyebrow too because I want everybody to read it and make their own assessment and opinion on it. Um, but had the select board not had that report prior to making their decision, um, then the question to move it forward to the voters would be in question. Um, but they had that report and had the opportunity to read it before they made their decisions to put this forward to the voters. But, but are you saying that the, the key issue was that there were other things that were just a higher priority? Yes, it was more priority. Are there any of those things that are higher priority also on the ballot or no. with plans ready to go? No. Okay, so there's no. nothing else that is Something ready to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So um, it was, it, that, and that's, that's what our concern was with the report. Um, was that, um, you know, we know that projects take time. Um, we know that the town needs the water. We know that the town, I, I fully support that, and they are priorities for the town. But like I said, those aren't rocking and ready to go. Right. Um, and we don't know how long it could take for some of those plans to be in place. So this is in a 10-year bond. Um, could we be almost done paying this off when the next one comes up and then it drops off our taxes? I don't know. Um, it's not a question I can answer because they're not in play yet. Um, so that's a great question because that was my thought process as well on that um, was um, we definitely have priorities in town for sure but it's really for the voters to decide what those priorities are at this point in time um, and it's not putting water below the priority it's just saying this is a priority as well so we water water is huge, huge but if there's not a plan then uh, in place then yeah. uh, and I'm not sure I understand why you would delay something that seniors and the youth and everyone in between needs but yeah okay. that's our thought process as well okay try not to push that on okay. but um you asked the question i didn't okay. want to really discuss <laughs> nope, it nope, but nope, fair okay. but um okay. that's yeah. fair enough great thanks Ryan. Yeah. Thanks, okay. for that. Yeah. what else do you have for me i don't chris no. okay I don't think I'm going to let you discuss, and I'll, I will hang. I won't pay attention, but if, if you have any questions that come up, I want to be here to be able to answer them. So Great. discuss okay. what you need to, and then let me know if you need Great. Anything. And you may have known the rules better than I. What has to happen by tomorrow if something happens? Oh, no. Uh, we, just to, we just we need to, if we are going to write an article in support of this article, we need to get it submitted by tomorrow so it can be published before people vote. Okay. Okay. Um, my thought is, I don't know what Bev's up to, but if someone is going to write this, Bev tends to write. Um, and she's... She was an English teacher. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. She writes a lot. Um, but one quite, in that, one thing that I think we might want to add is, so there's this awful performing, really leaky old building, I think, our... We would recommend passing this, but then we'd also recommend that that be um, updated to the highest efficiency possible. Like, whatever happens to that building, whether it's sold or whether, like, that when it is sold, that part of it is that it has to be updated to the highest efficiency possible or that the town does that or um, just so it's not like, well, we've moved out of this old building, but it's still hanging on and we still have this... Right. Yeah, at least some Energy positive, talk. some positive disposition, uh, so yeah. that it, a it's no longer a burden, yes. uh, you know, both economically and environmentally on the town, and then and, and better yet that it become and uh, human health wise, I'm human sure it's not good yeah. to be in there. <laughs> Is there are there any requirements? Are there any requirements along those lines? Or for repurposing? The, well, any you know, it depends on what, like, no. Yes and no. It depends on what the reuse is. Okay, so, like, if right. the town, I mean, the, ta the town hasn't made any, there's, there's several, many options what you could do with that project. Right, right. And I think, like, if we were to write an article in support of that, I think that's something that we should attach on to. We support this, and we would especially mm -hmm. support renovating these buildings to make them more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. That's not... If, they, if, they're like, retain, if they're retained by the town. If they're retained or yeah, if they're not yeah. retained, selling them, but when you develop them, you have to right. meet this energy performance. Yeah, and if someone, if someone substantially rehabbed it and triggered building permits and triggered the building code, then they would need to meet all the current energy standards. Oh, right. I think what you're saying is go yeah. beyond that. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, instead of R30 in the walls or R38, depending on if they're sloped or not, you know, R45 or, you know, like, yeah. kind of like that. Like, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, the only, I think, yeah, I agree. And I, the only other thing I, I'd say is... Uh, or if it stays, just, in, you know, yeah. Yeah. Add some... Try it before yeah. we re-inhabit it, make it, it a little better. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, the only other thought I'd have too, just, for, just from a note from from the committee, if we were to put to, together a letter of endorsement for that, is that, you know, I just because I think we need to, just because I think we need to say it, not that I think you can enforce it, but just the spirit of it would be that, you know, as every project unfolds, if if it passes and, and the, the bonds get issued and the money happens and the plans move forward, there's, you know, a thousand moments to, to make decisions and take choices. And that I just would like that, you know, what's the, what's the most sustainable practice to be considered in each one of these things that we just would ask that the, the continued development move sustainability near the top of uh, their considerations every time a decision gets made because it's, it, 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 we're, we're, right yeah. It's yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not, nothing's yeah. finalized yeah. at this right. point. Right, exactly. And so, our goal is to keep you really yeah. and to have conversations and, and get on your agenda when we can when updates come and if there's other things like we just recommended, um, something that we had talked about before. Sure. We're going to continue to have those discussions because we really value you want this to be a sustainable package. Yeah, and I, I think it's one of those things, though, that it's, um, that's part of culture and practice, right? So, cause there's gonna be a lot of little micro decisions that happen all day long through this development process. And the reactivity has to be, you know, we should think about, you know, instead of, well, it's cheaper if we do it this way, you know, uh, if it's gonna be a legacy to the town, you know, it's a significant investment. I think it's the largest thing on the, on the warrant this year, except for the town budget, except for the budget, right? Um, and along the lines of like, when you're saying, um, this is the cheaper option, this is the more sustainable option. Um, a lot of ways of making sure you do the right thing, not necessarily um, cutting out. And but by the time you get to the end, Milo, we just are going to do the cheap one um, of doing a third party certification for the building. Um, and I wasn't sure if that could be part of the fundraising effort to cover the cost of doing um, Energy Start. Energy Start doesn't even cost anything. So you can, yeah. Um, so Energy Star, you can have it designed to Energy Star, and then after you've been in the building for a year, you submit all of your energy bills, mm -hmm. and then you can get Energy Star certification for the building. Um, it has to perform better than 75% of comparable buildings. Um, but yeah, there's LEED, there's a, many different building certifications that you could look at, and I wonder if that could be part of phase two of the fundraising efforts, because it looks like you don't, you don't have to change much to the building, you're already doing it, but that way it could ensure that it's incorporated as part of the building, but it's not something that taxpayers are paying for, which might be. Makes sense. Um, and off this topic, if you would like any input, um, this is my background and I'm happy to like sit in on meetings and help that part of the building. Like, I'm, so I'll make sure that I... Okay. Okay, well, especially, like, just, like, building review yeah. document, because um, that's what I'm doing for the Unitil building. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like fun. Thank you. <laughs> now officially my job to do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of part-time. That's awesome. I appreciate it. So I think what I'm hearing is, and we need to vote on it, is an endorsement, but a set of probably conditions. Endorsement, party to a few conditions, and maybe we should say, um, you know, sort of the basis for endorsement too, which... Yeah, I think conditions is a strong word. I, I, I think I'd use the word recommendations or we'd like yeah, things, okay. things we'd like to see. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think, okay. you know. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a conditional endorsement. I would say it's an endorsement... With recommendations. Okay. With these recommendations, and I would... Reach out to Bev because she's been involved and aware of it. She's, yeah, she's mm -hmm. talked to Brad Pizer. Okay, so I would reach out to her, but I'd also want to involve Chetna and make sure she's on board. But like, we can vote on it. But I would yeah. just want Chetna to have a part in the sure. writing or review. Well, she'll get. So. She, yeah, she'll get, get get what we do. But yeah, I yeah, mean, we're a quorum, we're a board, and yeah. So yep. I mean, she's probably watching us. So. <laughs> um, so we can we make a decision. That's how we Text. all work. Is any one of us is gone, we still plug on. Um, but the recommendations I'm hearing are three. One, that the existing buildings on Court Street um, must be made more efficient if repurposed or should be made more efficient if repurposed. Um, that sustainability be at the forefront of all decisions along the way, all decision nodes or decision processes. And then um, to attempt or pursue or consider pursuing a third party certification such as Energy Star or lead in phase two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I think, like, it sounds like you're doing a lot already, yeah, so. Um, and I know that, mm -hmm. just so you know, they, they did look into the leads as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was, I don't want to just quote the number. It was, it was, and it wasn't a question of, like, money over, but it was exorbitantly expensive. Yeah, so that's. It, it was, yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> I mean, what it added. I mean, upper echelons of levels. well, but to, it, um, it depends on who you're asking to, yeah, because um, there's just the certification, which is like five thousand dollars, <coughs> but mm -hmm. then some architects you talk to right. add a lead fee of extra twenty percent right. per project, which right. is just right. yeah. So no, I'm I'm working with this right now. But I like this the fundraising important. recommendation. I think that's great um, on that piece. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, which there are like parts of it, but there there's ways you can get the certification and not have it cost excessive amounts by choosing what you're going for carefully. So perfect. Okay. And then I think if I said, you know, maybe basis and this is something that anyone can add to. I it sounds to me, you know, based on kind of looking at things in the town for over, at least over a year, Dave's much longer, but it seems that the sustainability considerations for this project far surpass any existing building or public, you know, office space development we've done in the past. Is that a fair statement? Like new construction? Well, it, right. Anything yeah. that we've done as far as a public public, public project. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not too familiar. I wasn't, I haven't been here, like I've been here five years, but I don't think we've had any. Just the library, and we certainly didn't put this. Well, yeah, stuff okay, in yeah, the that's just still under construction and right. decisions. Those right. micro decisions you talk about yeah. are still uh, being well, made. Well, but even at the macro level. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I, yeah, nothing I can think of. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's and sure. then I think the other plus for me is extensive coordination across various communities from the youth to the seniors. Because that's something, you know, even last year when we were working the committee trade uh, position and all that, that there was input from some people in the community that, um, part of sustainability in their minds was the intergenerational sustainable community type of feel. Yep. There, there was, there, we did receive comments along yeah, those lines. Yeah, and which that's this actually something we've discussed quite a bit and we've actually dug up um, studies and, you know, obviously my husband and I come from large Greek families and our, our folks live a long time <laughs> and we're very grateful for that. But a lot of it we, we attribute to the fact that they're around all different ages, running around, you know, my kids would sit down with our 103-year-old aunt and we make palm crosses at Easter and, you know, silly stuff like that. But we we made sure the kids did that, not just for the kids, because the kids learn so much from it yeah. and get so much from it. But the, the seniors, their longevity is shown in studies to really progress and their, their quality of life is so much better. So that's our goal, and that was one of the, the reasons for wanting to pull all generations together yeah. is because it's a learning component that I don't think we see as much as, as we used to. I mean, you know, we see it. My kids are at sports on, on Sundays now. My son's an altar boy, but we're at baseball most of the time now. But all those components where he was around the community and around seniors yeah. in church or after church or at family functions that we can't quite get to now because we're so busy. Yeah. We just bring them in together and have it be part of it. I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, and that's a piece that I'm super passionate about. Um, and I've talked with Greg and Melissa that we're going to be doing a lot of things like, for example, a senior citizen um, spaghetti supper where we have the kids serve and right. sit with the, the seniors and have those dinners. A lot of things like that um, to incorporate all the generations okay. together. I think it's going to just make really firm. Okay. So I think just so we can, because we have to get on to a next yeah. agenda item. Yeah. Right. Um, if there's any other recommendations besides those three I mentioned, and then I think for a basis for the, the if we were to do an endorsement, we'll do a motion, the two, the two I mentioned, and then I'd say the third things are, it seems like there's been an honest attempt to address the butter comments. And maybe yeah, the we, only one really you couldn't have. get to is you had to have that road part of the way through. Unfortunately, it okay. is. And I mean, we've even talked to them as well about um, being able to adjust times during construction. Mm -hmm. So we have a two-year time frame in which we're looking to have this done. But we've said it may go a little bit longer because if they don't want construction on weekends, we're willing to pull back and do that so that they can sleep in or have their time to not have the noise on weekends. Um, a normal start time is 8 a.m. We can, or I think it's 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. We were able to put it 7, so we were saying we could push it to 8. So we're trying to work with them. Um, we had a, a meeting 
um, scheduled just for the abutters on that side. We had one show up, but we put it out for them to come and we were hoping they would come so we could have these discussions further, but um, we only had one individual show up, which took, she took copious notes. So we're happy, hopefully she brought some back um, to them. Um, and if they're watching, we wanna work with you. I mean, we worked with Wayside um, because we were able to, because it wasn't the, the functional part of the park. Unfortunately, they happen to buy on the functional part of the park. Um, in some concessions, like I said, we're gonna be working with our lighting crew um, to make sure that the lights aren't glaring lights on them. We wanna work with the specific lights that are safe to the, you know, to the facility, but aren't shining on their facility. Right. Um, when it's shut down time, those are on timers and they're gonna go off. Um, the, like I said, the construction times. Um, things of that nature. We've um, tried to reassure them that there are gonna be a number of trucks that come through with loan, but they're not gonna, I think the number was like 2,200 that's out there right now. There, there may be, but they're not all coming through at once. It's a two year project. They're not gonna all line up on High Street and <laughs> calm down, but that's the perception that's being painted. And, right. and I just don't want that to be right. the perception being painted. I mean, we're, okay. you know, it's, it's, it was the same when they were having construction done in their complex for the town. It's gonna be like that for, for, um, the park. Yep. So okay. So then, does anyone else have anything else, or do we yep. want to try to pursue a motion here? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that we'll pursue a motion to endorse Article Four, um, based on the you know the extensive sustainability considerations that really far surpass any town project to date. The extensive coordination across various communities and stakeholders throughout the town and the willingness to continue to work to address abutter comments and concerns. And then with the recommendations that existing buildings on Court Street uh, be made more efficient in mm -hmm. however they're repurposed, um, keep sustainability at the forefront of um, all decisions and decision points in the process, and consider a third party certification in phase mm -hmm. two um, through, through the fundraising mm -hmm. yeah. with Energy Star or LEED. Did I get those? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I'll second that. And I think okay. too, if you could, um, if you could, um, if you were comfortable addressing as well, I think we had a really good robust conversation about the responsible removal of trees um, okay. because I, it, it's, you know. Um, that, that's true. The there, perception there is a lot is, of misinformation. Yeah, about the there is. That. It's been made okay. like we're, you know, we're bringing in Humvees and we're just going to mow them over. <laughs> um, and that's not it. I mean, that's just the perception is like okay. these Tonka trucks. Like it just is this awful perception that we're, we're coming out with these, you know, um, awful intentions. I mean, to have... Um, productivity and to have growth, you've got to, unfortunately, it's part of the component. Um, and the land swap will hopefully, you know, address quite a bit of that. Um, but I think that, it, you know, we don't want to take down trees if we don't have to, but if okay. they need to be taken down, they can be done responsibly. Okay. And that's what our goal is, what we've been trying to do. And I'm okay with adding that in yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, agreed. Thank okay. you guys. All right. And you still second? I'll still second that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, all, anyone? Aye. 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 Many eyes. Okay. All thank right. you for your time and thank you for all your right, endorsement. Guys. We really appreciate it, guys. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Any further questions, go figure each out. You Great. should go to sleep, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually so tired of your job. I'm going to work again now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. Bye. So I will probably just try to write something up for this tonight, send it to everybody on the committee. Yeah. Okay. If, um, like, if you know the process, if you can finalize it, because I'm headed to D.C. in the morning. Um, but yeah, I think we just make sure we do whatever we need to do to get it through. Um, um, I don't think it's a matter if, if we want to have Bev proofread it with her English teacher, you know, right background. Then. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it might take a couple of days. Well, I think she we don't have a couple of days. I think we had. She did, right? Yeah, she left for Florida. Oh, okay. Oh, she yeah, went to I Florida? talked to her last night at Riverwoods and she okay. said, you won't see me, I'm leaving Florida. All right. Well, well so I don't know her, so about her availability. Okay. 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 We'll get to the whole meeting and yeah. then we'll just, yeah. Right. Yeah, if you, well, we'll send, we'll send it out and if, yeah, yeah if somebody can, besides me can be a point person for making any changes to it. Okay, then, I'll, I'll edit. I'm happy to do that. Okay. And, include, um, and get it Nina, in. Can you get it to who it needs to get to to get it published? Sure. Okay. Okay. So we can do that. We'll put it out, and then people can reply to you. And you know, I mean, okay. maybe I copy me, but you can't put the whole committee it on it. So edited we can't. to you by nine a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. That's okay. Good. All right. Okay. So, um, what is next?
overview of grant to RPC. Um, and I guess Julie wasn't feeling good, so you can talk to that, or if you no, want, we can kick it to briefly, next time if it's not a critical yeah, thing. Just, just briefly, um, due to the late hour, but I had spoken to you the meeting before last about providing you with kind of a you know potential work plan. Like, well, a couple things. First, what the city's been doing. I'm a city, oh, town. <laughs> I still get confused on that. Uh, having been in the city for a while, the, the um, town's been doing, you know, for sustainability efforts for, you know, many years. For, right. You know, we have a solar, small array, but we do have a solar array over at the Department of Public Works and have for many years. Um, but what, what, what we've been doing, what we've been focused on, and then what we could or should be doing more of, uh, or, or doing, period, right. you know, if we're, if we're not doing now. And then a list of items what the Sustainability Advisory Committee could work right. on. You know, and, and I had a list of, uh, you know, I don't know, a lot, a, lot, a lot of different things you could work on, from, you know, a sustainable purchasing policy, for example. You know, that, that's a good one. That, you know, the town adopts, and, and, and those micro decisions, like, you know, when, I, when I'm going to buy this, you know, you, you think of X, Y, and Z, right. instead of just, you know, oh, okay, this is the cheapest. You right. know, you kind of think of, you know, where it came from, cradle-to-grave analyses and so forth. So anyway, I was going to do that. Then I started talking to Julie about this grant opportunity, and we quickly realized that, there's a lot of duplicity there because she got this coastal resiliency grant and you can read what she sent out you know in the packet over carefully is cre is basically creating that work plan mm -hmm. for the committee for the office so i said i think we better collaborate on this instead of me going forward and thing i said you know you're getting a grant to do this uh, so we will collaborate on that. We have had a couple of discussions since then. She was going to come tonight. We we're going to kind of do a dual presentation, but she's not feeling well. So I would just say that and say, you know, we'll be prepared at the next meeting Great. Uh, to come and, you know, and, okay. and give a more thorough presentation. But on the meantime, I just glance at what, you know, the materials she sent okay. um, that outline what she's doing for, with, with the grant funding. Okay, so we'll just put that on yeah. the agenda for next Pretty, meeting. Yeah, yeah. I think the one thing I would ask that you look at is from the whole um, SOA brief that started the whole sustainability thing in your town. There were a number of recommendations for near term and long term. And just to see if they. Right, I would know, make sure because those were done with a lot of public input right. and, and comment and, and even town and people input and comment. So. Yeah, so just, really just to, to, to match it up because there may be some of those things on yours and Julie's. Uh, mm -hmm. list and just see if the, some of those, you know, see if we can cross off some of those things that see if they're, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So next update on Exeter Climate Workshop Me. All right. I did go to a meeting of this Exeter Climate Workshop group, which uh, Kristen Murphy is leading. And I think to keep it really brief, um, it, it's going to happen on a date in May, and I forget the date. May 7th. May 7th. Okay. Five o'clock. Five, five to seven, and I think there's food at first, and then yep. the presentations start around 5.30. And the, the gist of it, of what they're working on, this group right now, is there are a gazillion um, studies and reports and things that have been commissioned for a long time, and this was something that we talked with Kristen about in January of 19, over a year ago, when we were starting our whole sustainability effort. There's all kinds of stuff. It's not readily accessible now on the website, except for DPW is pretty good about listing all the things they do. And, um, and it's not really made available or fully utilized by all the boards and committees, because uh, a lot of times we're not aware of what's out there. So this group is looking at all of these and they're pre preparing kind of one page synopsis cool. of all of them. And then it's gonna be like a training for, um, board members and committee members so they know what's out there, what have we already paid for, what have we already done, and how can we best use it. That's great. And that's sort of the gist of it, unless you have anything to add, Dave. No, that's that's just, yeah. That's okay. Fine. Okay. Um, Where will yeah. the just, workshop be on May 7th? Um, we, we wasn't 100% decided, but I think it's, it's probably town hall, and we talked about the second floor. Yeah, we're working floor. out a venue. We want to make sure it's comfortable. For right. folks and and be able to break out in group sessions and hear the audio mm -hmm. the acoustics over in the lower floor are kind of challenging sometimes when you have multiple breakout groups yeah. talking in the same in that room 
you get a lot of uh, back noise. So we're, we'll figure that out and we'll get it out there. But just to uh, just to make the point, this is this is not a public workshop. It's uh, not focused to for public mm -hmm. information. It's oh. it's for the land use boards. Oh, okay. It's like an all right. boards meeting because mm -hmm. we want them to the decision makers in the town to, yeah. to be aware of all these things right. and how they can how these documents can help. Uh, mm -hmm. what they do sure. and, and you know create maybe future regulations to you know and, and storm sur you know regulations surrounding storm surge and so forth so that's great it's, it's geared toward land use boards okay. wonderful okay and I think I forwarded all the links and all of that because I might not be able to make the next meeting I think Chet yeah, I think went to one and I went right to there. one yep. right so um, so yes if there's anyone that can make March if Chetna can't um, that'd be great um, next sustainability fair, I think you guys are going to com continue meet. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and if we have to do something sooner than a month, let us know. Um, update PEA sustainability students. Um, neither of them are here. I know I didn't get any inputs, but just kind of based on the discussion and other discussions, I sent them a bunch of thoughts and ideas in a range, and I think they've really focused on their working on um, um, ways to get public information out in support of Articles 25 and 27. Mm -hmm. They've also spoken with or sat down with Lou Hisrod of the Energy Committee. Okay. And I think that's, I think, where they're at. Um, but if we have any need to reach out to them, we can, or they can always reach out to us. Um, I don't know what AOB stands for. Does anyone know what AOB stands for? That's the next thing on the agenda. Hmm. Any other business? business. Any other business? Okay. <laughs> All right. For the day. Oh, yeah. and I missed one. <laughs> Follow up on yard waste recycling proposal at transfer state. Yeah, apparently the select board voted it down like five to nothing. Five really? to nothing. Which kind of blows me away. As that's really? Kind of a, since they, I think, weren't they five to nothing and putting it forward to the next meeting and kind of, and I don't understand really why. I don't know if you have any. Yo, what was the discussion that that turned it? Yeah, I I wasn't at that meeting. Okay. Um, so, but I, you know, I got the recap and the rundown. Mm -hmm. There were a few issues. Um, there were some concerns. DPW had some concerns. Uh, there, is, there is an aquifer area. Uh, that that area that they were planning on does flood quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, in the spring, I've seen it. Like you know. I mean, you know, yeah. well, I don't know how deep, but water, you yeah. know, um, in that low-lying yeah. area because it was an old pit and it's gotten excavated and maybe gotten into the seasonal high water table uh, even probably then some too because maybe not in, into it, but on some higher flood years, you know, it's definitely, I've seen it since I've been here in the yeah. springtime. Uh, so that could, you know, th there were a number of um, concerns. Uh, the abutters came, you know, there were quite a few abutters around it um, that spoke that spoke in opposition to it. Yep. Um, so there were a lot of unanswered questions. I think that's um, what happened. But that was the ZBA, not the select board. Okay. okay. That was the ZBA. Okay. Then that was the ZBA because uh, okay. they needed, they needed a, a, I believe, a variance to operate. Okay. Mm. Um, because okay. Right. So even though it's on town, here, yeah, yeah. even that, though it's on town land, I was, I was confused. Yeah, by it's that, not a I it's heard. not a okay. governmental use. Okay. So it's a it's it's on mm -hmm. governmental land, but that doesn't exempt it from land use regulation. A okay. governmental use is exempt. Like if you put a school there, you know, you, you you're exempt from mm -hmm. local uh, okay. regulations, but they're mm -hmm. subject to them. So they had to go, and it was the ZBA, and and. You know, admittedly, a variance is a high threshold. It's sure. not. It's not a preference of whether I like it. It's a good idea. It's a bad idea. There's five set criteria uh, that you know are established. You know, their meanings established through case law, and, and it's a very high bar. It's prohibited. So, you know, so it's, it's it's asking for relief from something that's prohibited, yeah. and it didn't it didn't pass. Didn't pass. Okay. Okay. Um, the only and other it, business that I think I'm aware of is is just a, a thought that. Um, one of the things, again, from the whole original sustainability initiative last year was what things to talk to the public about. What can I do? Because that was the one other thing we heard is what can I, Joe Jane Citizen, do every day to be more sustainable in our lives and 
you know, and we've thrown out things like that before, whether it's the, you know, use these instead of single use bottles or, or you know, buy recycled toilet yeah. paper so we save the forest in Canada. Or, there's a gazillion things, but if that's something we came up with a concise top 10 with or, or whatever it is, um, is that something that there's a place you can post as our sustainability yeah, I wanted officer? Yeah, I wanted that to be part of the sustainable, uh, ex sustainable Exeter video that... I've started working on right. Yeah, you're talking about that, um, okay. and I've gotten a couple interviews. Uh, you know, I've asked a couple people. Mm -hmm. I would expect maybe you know all of you to participate or get okay. interviewed. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll get that email out shortly. And okay, that was the whole purpose of it to like people to walk away what they do in their lives, right. and someone can watch that and say, "Oh, I could do that. I can, I that, could yeah. do this." And, right, and or you could. When you do it, you could do your your top ten or whatever, you know. Okay. Like get that message out there. Okay. So, um, or if you wanted to make something up, I did. I got the sustainability page. There's a sustainability page on our website that's up and running that has a link to all those documents we were talking about earlier oh, for the climate great. outreach. So okay. It is there. Great. If people want to, you okay. know, um, get it, and I could put something there. So. Okay. Yeah, whatever you come up with, you know, okay. I can figure out how to how to get it out there. Okay. So. Right. Yeah, like I just had a couple. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, quickly, yeah. Okay. Just because I thought I'd let you know what I've been up, uh, you know, uh, what I've been up to. I mean, I got, they designated me the sustainability officer. So I just want <laughs> to tell you a couple oh, of things I've. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jamie, sorry, you yeah, were here last time. Select yeah. board did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was here last time. Oh, that's right. No, it was the, no, it was the time, time before. before like, yeah, yeah, it was the time before. I wasn't here at the time. Uh, I wasn't here the last time. I got So, yes. So, you know, for this year, you know, that was, yep. you know, um, or until, you know, further, we'll see how this work plan goes and, and the grant goes and, and figure out from there. But just wanted to tell you, I submitted, i um, been working on a draft work plan for the UNH fellowship. Me like a, too. You know, a 10, yeah, yeah a 10 week work <laughs> plan there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting exercise when you, you know. Did you look at the templates? They were, I just oh, yeah. grabbed from the template and it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, but then I, st there was a lot in between, like to think about and what they're going to do and specifically what, you know, because I'm trying to envision them to. sitting in there and specifically what to do. So that took some time. But we got that in. Um, we got the draft in there. We'll be interviewing three candidates. We got three candidates uh, interested in Great. specifically in the wow. uh, Exeter project. I mean, that they kind of called through, UNH kind of calls through. We're going to interview all three uh, next week. I think okay. we set up March 9th and 10th. Cool. I'll be sitting in with UNH uh, over at their campus. Uh, I believe it's at their campus, but I'll, I'll find all the email. I think it's a video. <coughs> oh, Vim, oh, it's that? I think it's a video yeah, interview. Use that. Because I think, some of the, I think some of the students are, like, across the country. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So. Then I don't, have, I don't have a video camera on my... Thing. But anyway, Zoom or whatever they yeah, call it. Yeah, something like Zoom, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I've been attending the energy committee meetings, uh, and, and I just wanted to pass along. The energy committee offered assistance uh, for the, for the um, committee. If you were planning anything for Earth Day, they are not. But then I told Renee that you were planning on some sustainability fair, but I didn't believe it would, it would coincide with an Earth Day, you know, what is yeah. that, late April? Um, April, yeah. Yeah, April, third week in April or something yeah. like that. Right. I was like, I don't the think that they're going to pull that together. So, yeah. and what you had, you had made a good point, Christopher, earlier about, you know, potential public health concerns. Maybe we want to just <laughs> hold on. Yeah, maybe, maybe our, our, our Earth Day <laughs> recommendations not, might be what you can do at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put the tree in your backyard. Yeah, they will, maybe we'll just keep working on the no, video. No, I'm just so saying. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, you didn't know that. Well, I'm glad I mentioned that. I, yeah. I also started a new position on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Sustainability. Analysis. Yeah, I'm still doing what I'm doing. They just they just added that title. I mean, a lot of what I do is, is geared toward that anyway. Right. Um, my background's in it. You okay. know, and, and planning is about that. It's not about planning an unsustainable future. <laughs> it's about... Uh, uh, some planners might disagree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not not myself with my background, but but then I, you know, I, I was like, yeah, I can do more. I, it's, it's an exciting thing for me, and, and you know, I'll be attending these. And, and the Energy Committee, that was a big thing to get the link and making sure, uh, you know, we're, we're working in, you know, the same path absolutely not being duplicative or anything like that so i've established a good relationship with them so look forward to working with the committee as the as the officer so awesome great
That's fantastic. All. Okay. And you guys have anything else? Any other business? Okay. All right. I'm going to close the meeting. Bang that gavel. All right. <laughs> Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um. <laughs>